Hi guys and welcome to Bell's YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for tuning in to our third video. Um, so for those of you that, that aren't familiar, uh, Bell is an online coaching matching service uh, and kind of our goal is to help people to become better in everyday life by connecting you with your ideal coach. We also aim to do this by dispelling some of the rumours and some of the uh, myths that you find in the fitness industry and sort of try to make fitness as accessible as possible and make a healthy lifestyle something that, that you can achieve. Uh, and, and one of the ways we're, we're doing that as well is through our blog and through these videos. So we're really sort of trying to dive into um, some hot topics within the, the fitness industry and within health uh, and lifestyle uh, and try to make them sort of more achievable uh, for, for the everyday person who just wants to be that little bit healthier. Uh, so today I'm joined by one of Bell's founding coaches, Neve McWalter. Uh, she's recently written uh, a great blog article for us um, all around sort of meal prepping. Uh, and we're going to, that's the topic that we're, we're going to be diving into today. Uh, so welcome Neve. It's, it's great to have you on. Hi Neve, how are you? I'm good. Thanks. I'm good. Um, so yeah, so just before we, we sort of dive into, uh, you know, the, the meat of it, if you could just give a little bit of background about yourself so people can sort of understand who you are and, and where you're coming from. So sort of your fitness origin story. Um, my name is Neve and I'm a coach from Mayo in the West of Ireland. Um, I got into fitness because my older brother is also a personal trainer and he's over in Vancouver at the moment. Um, so I ended up doing sports science in college. Um, I did my four year degree and then when I graduated, I kind of worked through college and gyms and then I started PT in one to one once I graduated. So I started doing online work then about a year ago and just before the pandemic started, which was good timing. And so I've been doing a mixture of online and one-to-one -one since. And in my personal life, I play rugby as well. So I'd have a strong focus towards sports and athletes as well as training people for fat loss goals. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine you're, you're missing the, the rugby at the minute. Um, a lot, yeah. It's, there's something very disconcerted with not being able to go to a field with the girls and just throw a ball around but hopefully we'll be back soon yeah yeah fingers fingers crossed we've got everything crossed for that um but yeah no that's that's great sort of a bit of background about yourself um so yeah so like i mentioned uh today we're talking about uh meal prepping so just before we really get into it um can you just give a little little overview of, of sort of what meal prepping is uh, for, for anyone who's sort of not familiar? Um, so I suppose meal prepping is kind of batch cooking or cooking in advance for your meals during the week. So um, people kind of associate with like bodybuilders bringing around their broccoli and rice around in their lunch boxes. But um, I think everyone would benefit from it. Like my mom used to batch cook everything for us on a Sunday. And um, so that's the way I kind of think of it. So it's just really preparing your meals ahead of time so that you don't have to go cooking every evening. You can just heat something up or reheat something and throw it in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you said about it being associated with sort of bodybuilders. Uh, you know, even now when I hear the words meal prepping, that's exactly what, what I think. Um, so, but I take it you, you sort of don't have that approach. You don't think it's just for bodybuilders. No, I think everyone can do it. Because I remember, kind of like I said, our mom used to always batch cook everything on a Sunday. So she'd make a big pot of spaghetti sauce, a big pot of mince, whatever it was. And that's where I've always kind of done it. And because, you know, I'm living out of home, what, eight or nine years now. And I've always just cooked for me. So it never made sense to just cook one meal. And that's how I got in the habit of it. And I saw how beneficial it was in terms of my own fitness as well. So that's kind of an approach I use my clients to get them to prepare things ahead of time so that you, when you come home at six o'clock it doesn't feel like you're facing in to go and chop and veg and chop and meat and everything like that yeah yeah no de definitely um i think yeah it's it's good to uh just being prepared it kind of takes away some of the uncertainty when it gets to the evening and you know you've already got something uh prepared is that something you found with with people you've coached that <laughs> yeah when 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 you're sort of more prepared you find it easier and uh, more able to sort of stay on track. Yeah, like I've always found the clients that do the best are the clients that put the most planning in and the most execution of their planning in. Like they're always your clients that you'll always get those good results, but week on week, the ones who prepare ahead of time and um, between like doing their meal prep, getting their clothes out the night before, all those little small things, they're always your clients that do the best. So it is something I think everyone could benefit from. 
Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you having done it for, for so long now, um, do you kind of just look at it as a bit of a, you know, how you do things? It's You don't even have to think about it. It's just naturally how, how you go about it. Yeah, it's like my Sunday ritual. I'll do my big shop, I'll come home, I'll do my load of cooking, and then it's, like, that's my Sunday, like, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is there a particular reason you, you go for Sundays with your, that's the day that you do all your cooking? Um, I used to always work Saturdays, so that's probably why. Um, probably, yeah, I just kind of got in the habit of doing it on a Sunday and because you don't really want to face into it on Monday because I always have a lot of client work to do on a Monday, so Monday's a really busy day. So especially if I have Monday's meals done, you know, I can just kind of grab and eat it as I'm working, um, you know, in comparison to trying to cook three meals a day when I'm at home. Yeah, 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 no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And and do you think that's something that's maybe helped you then, the fact that you kind of always stick to, uh, you know, doing it on a Sunday and it's sort of part of a routine? Yeah, like, they, I, think, I think that's big on, like, kind of the exercise psychology element of it. The people or people who do best are people who kind of stick to the routine and get everything in the routine and it's a real natural part of their lifestyle. Um, so that's definitely something... I try and build into other people's lives I work with as well as in my own life. Mm, yeah, 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 no, that's that's fair enough. So I think, um, you know, kind of, I think people will know what uh, meal prepping is now um, and sort of understand how you do it. What what do you think are sort of some of the main benefits that, that people can take from meal prepping uh, and why they should do it, you know, even if they're not a bodybuilder or one of those people that falls within the sort of stereotypes associated with meal prepping? Um, so it's a lot more cost effective um, because I find if you buy a load of things and you don't cook them straight away, something will inevitably go off and um, you'll be end up throwing out a load of food or you'll end up getting a takeaway or something like that, which is obviously a lot more expensive than a home cooked meal. So it definitely saves money it definitely saves time because if you're kind of in the zone of chopping veg at one go it's a lot quicker than if you have to face into it every evening and you know you can have like three pots go at the same time whereas you know it might be a much more of an ordeal every evening to do it um, and then I think as well when you prep things ahead of time whether or not you're trying to lose body fat or not or have a physique goal in mind in terms of your actual health I think when you prepare ahead of time you see off you see and often more clearly are you getting in carbohydrates are you getting in protein are you getting in vegetables because you have it ahead of time kind of set out in front of you you can see what's going into your body even if it's not something that you're into or not in terms of like like you said like being a bodybuilder even like losing fat you can actually see okay maybe I never eat vegetables maybe I never eat enough veg or maybe I never get any protein in or whatever it is. So you definitely get a better overview of what your food is like during the week. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely, uh, definitely agree. Um, cause I think it's very rare that you actually like sort of stop and think about, you know, things you're doing. Uh, I think in general, we we sort of don't really do that too often. And it's very important uh, in loads of aspects of our lives, but particularly with your food, you can kind of not pay attention and realize that it's been like a couple of days since you had a piece of fruit or something um which is obviously not not ideal uh and so yeah doing it all at once i guess can help you give have that that oversight um as to to sort of what it is you're you're eating um and, and that point about it being sort of more cost effective you know that's a, a massive um benefit i i think anyway i i didn't when i was at university a couple of years ago uh i didn't necessarily think oh i'm meal prepping but i would think oh let's batch out a load of food so that you know i'm not losing anything and you know you know the a student budget is usually quite a, a tight budget um and i think that's really important for people nowadays in such sort of um, uncertain times yeah um where actually you know people aren't too sure about jobs and you know lockdowns and, and all that sort of thing um so i think that's something you know the cost effectiveness is is a really big benefit that i think should be highlighted which which maybe isn't um done so sort of at the minute really um yeah no definitely like like you said people are in a lot more unstable position and i think as well you know and I was in a habit for a little while I kind of stopped for a little while I came I went away to the states so I come, came home 
and I wasn't in the habit of prepping and I kind of stopped for a little while and I spent so much more money just because I used to go into a shop every day to pick up stuff for dinner instead of doing a big shop and a big cook so with that you know you're always going to pick up something that you don't need or you'll see something like, oh that's an offer and you might never use it so you do end up spending an awful lot more money and it's a lot easier to kind of track and budget when you have the one long receipt every week that you can say okay i spent x amount of groceries this week i can spend that again next week or i can save here or i didn't need this or whatever it is like even just to have that one long receipt from doing your big shop instead of doing going through five or six of them makes it a little bit more cost effective as well yeah definitely so obviously uh there's a bunch of things you just covered there in terms of you know why uh meal prepping is is so good do you think it's something that literally anyone can benefit from oh yeah a hundred percent like i see it as a single person living kind of with people but i cook just for me and but also like families definitely like i can't imagine if you're like a busy mom or busy dad and you're trying to cook for your family every night that's time consuming like and you know I imagine you come home from work and the kids are hanging out with you or whatever it is like it's definitely something everyone could benefit from like when you live on your own to me it never made sense to just cook for one meal and um, and then obviously when you live as a family you're that much busier that it does make more sense to prep so even like I said if you don't care what your body looks like or you don't care about you know kind of your health and like that it'll still save you time and money so you could still benefit from it like yeah 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 no definitely so yeah literally anyone um it looks like is, is going to benefit from from this sort of thing so um one of the uh, uh things that you kind of mentioned um in the blog article you wrote uh a few uh, you know mentioned it a couple of times uh was sort of um you know fast food and, and delivery services um now obviously you know over the last i don't know five six seven years uh things like uber eats just the uh, deliveroo have just become like massively popular um what are your thoughts on like how that's impacted sort of people's overall sort of nutrition habits and overall sort of quality of food they're getting from uh you know their their weekly intake oh i'd say it's definitely been negative like i know myself it's too easy it's too easy to order food now um especially because i remember like a few years even just a few years ago it would take so long for takeaway to deliver you could always tell yourself okay i'd have something cooked in the same time but especially like uber eats now if you're in any kind of a built-up area they will literally get you food in 20 minutes and it's it's too easy like it's and with that you know you can get a healthy takeaway of course but you don't know what goes into things and that's I think that's the biggest thing if you're trying to kind of improve your health or lose weight you just can't account for how a chef in a restaurant is going to put oil in put butter in to make something taste good so it might feel really clean when you eat it you might be able to see loads of edge and stuff you know especially with your thai takeaways like they always seem to be kind of a better choice and they always do have loads of protein and loads of edge in them but like you really do have to think to yourself okay when i make it or something very similar it doesn't taste like that so what is a chef putting into that that we don't know and you know it's it does make it so much harder to track your calories or track your intake of like saturated fats and stuff if you eat out the more times you eat out the more uncertainty it's there because you are guessing every time you order out so you know if you have one takeaway a week fair enough you can probably fit it in and guess it around or whatever the more you do that the more guessing there is going on the you know the bigger the bigger impact it's going to have and say your waistline and your overall health and everything like that yeah 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 i think they just you know really lowered the um sort of uh you know the the barriers to entry in terms of getting a a, a fast food uh, you know takeaway or something like that has has drastically made it just so much easier for you to to go and sort of eat um you know more un, unhealthily um so if you know say there's someone listening who you know is thinking now oh yeah I I, I kind of eat a lot of of takeaways or you know got I know my local delivery uh, bike rider or something like that because they they order so often. What would you say to them in terms of using uh, meal prep as a way to help reduce the number of times um, you're ordering fast food? Um, well, first of all, I would say take, like, and it's a scary thing to do, 
but actually go into whichever app you use if it's just eat if it's uber eats or whatever it is and actually like add up how much you're spending in a week and it's probably the same price as an entire food shop for like two or three meals you know so it's definitely going to save you money that way if you are ordering out a lot it is definitely going to save you an awful lot of money and also it takes away that convenience factor because if something's in the fridge right pop into the microwave or pop back in on the hob just to heat it up a bit that is as handy as someone handing you your food it's not a big ordeal like it's as handy as putting something into the microwave it's as handy as unwrapping something it you know it it will really take away that convenience factor from you know getting your takeaway like i i did a cut last year and i actually deleted all the meal delivery apps off my phone for a few months (laughs) just so the temptation wouldn't be there like so i just yeah. wouldn't order off them yeah i think that's a good that's a good technique if you're struggling with anything just take it out of your sight you know it, it out of your field of vision and it'll become way easier to to sort of stop using that service or, or stop eating that thing um but yeah i totally agree if you you know if you're cooking a load of stuff on sunday by the time it gets to like tuesday when i mean the way the world is at the minute i can't keep track of what day it is but by the time you get to the middle of the week, you've completely forgotten that you've cooked that stuff. So it's not like, it is like having a takeaway. Like you can't remember that effort that you put in. And with that as well, like it is important. I don't know if I can mention in the article, but it's definitely something to highlight. Make food you like. Make food that's genuinely tasty. Like, because, you know, and it does come back to that whole idea of it being like chicken and broccoli in the container. You don't want something with no sauce that is that looks miserable by Wednesday, just kind of sitting there on its own in the corner of the fridge. Like you want something that like makes you excited to eat it, like because then you will you will come back to that idea that it is more convenient to order something if something looks a bit miserable. So definitely find recipes you like. If it takes a bit of trial and error, it takes a bit of trial and error, but definitely find tasty recipes you like you know there's loads of people who cover as well myself included like how to make kind of takeaway style food at home like sachets and curries and stuff like that that are as nice as what you get out and definitely like definitely go for that instead of trying to um look at something that looks a bit sad you know yeah yeah no 100 percent um i think as well like if uh you know you're maybe someone who's who's not big into cooking and you're thinking oh i could i don't want to try uh cooking something that's uh you know a bit fancier a bit looks a bit nicer you know i think now's the time to try it we've got more time on our hands or, or sort of maybe not necessarily more time but you know less distractions in terms of like leaving the house and, and that sort of thing so you could definitely if you're deliberate about it carve out some time to really try out some to new recipes so this could be the time that you really discover the fact you love cooking or uh, and combine that with uh, meal prepping and i guess you're sort of on to a winner there aren't you definitely yeah yeah um so yeah so just to sort of wrap things up um i think by now people kind of understand that meal prepping is not necessarily just for those who have serious you know physique goals or uh, are, are you looking to to be bodybuilders like it, it there is benefits out there for for everyone and it can be quite exciting to to actually meal prep uh, and actually do it with food that, that is really nice um so what would be kind of your your top tips uh, or, or things that have really helped you I'm not sure if you can remember because you've been doing it for so long, but really helps you get into meal prepping. Say if you're going cold from cold turkey, you've never meal prepped before. Like what are some of the things that will make it easier for people? Um, pick a day and pick a time and give yourself enough time, especially the first couple of times you do it. Like if you think it's going to take you half an hour to chop enough veg for a week, it will take you double that, especially at the start when you're getting into it make your shopping list before you go so you know exactly what you have to get so you know if you're not on your own um talk with people in your family or in your household that you cook with ask them what they'd like to eat this week will we do a spaghetti one night will we do whatever get that down decide what you're going to have decide if you're prepping like all three of your meals every day or if you're just prepping your lunch and dinner or if you're just doing your breakfast and lunch for work and you don't mind cooking the evenings whatever it is have that before you go. I would ideally shop and cook the same day. Set aside all your time 
and then from there just give it a lash pick out a couple of new pick out a new recipe every week that will help you kind of stay creative with it and just just try it out set yourself the time sometime this weekend and just try it out yeah awesome awesome i think that's uh, those are some really great great tips i think it comes down to um you know just being organized i guess because it is so different to uh, you know doing it ad hoc you know cooking your meals as you go um so it does take a bit of organization but yeah if you're if you're you know planning out your your list and you set a time you know right on sundays on saturdays you know whenever you decide to do it at this time i'm going to be cooking you set that time aside whack on a good show on netflix or something um and yeah i think you're you're good to go so you've got to have that uh you know try to be a bit organized with it which which might be difficult in in such uncertain times but having a bit of structure like that actually might be might be a good thing and um definitely as well the only other thing i'd say to people get um good lunch boxes that won't leak because the last thing you want oh. is to have prep this like fab meal really looking forward to it and find that's ruined everything in your handbag so definitely you know it will it will be a bit pricey at the start but you know and um, definitely invest in some good quality like lunch boxes and pyrex stuff because you don't no one wants to see the person bolognese sauce all over their laptop so definitely yeah I, I'm, I'm not too sure about handbags but i've definitely had a few backpacks ruined by uh stuff just leaking out so uh, i can i can attest to, to how important it is to have proper proper tupperware um so yeah so i think that's pretty much covered uh, everything that that we wanted to to go through around around meal prepping if you know people listening and watching have been inspired and, and want to give it a go uh, then do definitely check out um neve's article on our website because he's even included a bunch of recipes that you can try so if you're not sure where to start then uh there's a bunch of stuff in there which looks really really nice and i'm definitely going to give it a go as well um, and I'll leave the link to that uh, below. Uh, I'll also leave uh, the link to Neve's Instagram in case you want to reach out to her uh, and as well as sort of Belle's Instagram and our, our website and, and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess the last thing to say is if you'd like the, if you've liked the video, give us a, a little thumbs up, a little like, uh, and if you're interested to see what else we've got coming, then definitely hit that subscribe button. Neve, thanks so much for, for coming on. It's been great to, to have you. Um, and I will speak to you guys in the next video.